Hello and welcome to the first episode of Shredlines. Today's first story is brought to us by The Mirror. And it turns out that Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher have had uh, some claims made against them that turn out to be quite hilarious. I remember uh, these two from that 70s show, one of my favorite comedies of all time. And it turns out that, uh, well, Mila Kunis is apparently from the Ukraine. I guess I didn't know that. Okay, well, someone over there is suing her for $5,000 because allegedly Mila Kunis is a chicken thief. So uh, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis do not appear to be taking this all that seriously because, well, as we read further on, the story just gets more and more hilarious. So apparently there is like a seven-year difference between these two, and it turns out that the entire reason for the stress is actually kind of indirect. So apparently Christina has been left an emotional wreck after the close proximity of the Jupiter Ascending Star. Now, I hadn't realized that this has such a profound effect on people, but it turns out that it will actually require about $5,000 to cover her therapy costs. So I do apologize, Christina, but you are going to need a lot more than a stolen chicken and $5,000 to work out your issues. Our next story comes to us from the low-hanging fruit that is Kanye West. This guy has apparently been promoting a streaming service called Tidal. Now, uh, I can't really say that I'm in the market for streaming services, so it's not too surprising to me at least that I've never heard of this before, but like everything he touches that he believes will turn to gold, he may actually uh, be getting a taste of the limits of his own celebrity according to this article so is this going to be the event that finally convinces Kanye West he is not all that let's uh, let's say probably not where I found this to be uh, particularly interesting was when he was basically asked to comment and he commented on another comment about somebody making some sort of an Illuminati reference. And he says here, if there was actually Illuminati, it would be more like the energy companies. What? Okay, uh, apparently real celebrities give their lives to music, and they're pinpointed as decoys for the people who really run the world. I'm tired of people pinpointing musicians as the Illuminati. That's ridiculous. Yes, that is pretty ridiculous Kanye and uh, yeah when people ask you to comment on something jumping right into the whole oh my god musicians are not the Illuminati probably not the best approach the response to that is can you please just answer the question in other music news CTV brings us the story of Sean Mendez who tells all of his young fans to go buy all of the album copies now, this is sort of like an author basically telling people to go buy multiple copies of their book, and if anyone were to hear that, they would probably roll their eyes and be like, well, why? It's the same material. I'm probably going to read it once unless it's really good, and even if it is, that still wouldn't necessitate multiple copies of the same material. Now, <laughs> what makes this doubly funny is that this kid is... I assume to be just really naive, and when the record companies told them, I don't know, maybe as a joke, that, hey, why don't you go tell fans to go buy all of your albums? He perhaps underestimated the influence that he would have, and as we can see here, one female fan from here in Ontario spent uh, $255.38 and proudly posted 16 of those copies strewn across her bed. So, again, the art... The audience that this artist is targeting, unfortunately, may not be at the age where they would have the kind of commercial savvy to realize that they are straight up being scammed, and it's really not all that cute. But I think this really just comes down to naivety, and unfortunately, a lot of these kids are going to be spending what is the equivalent of their life savings up until that point on multiple copies of the same garbage. Now... I've never heard any of this guy's music, but based on his target audience, I'm really not all that interested. 
I'm probably not even going to buy one. So to all of those out you, <laughs> you out there who have bought multiple copies of this thing, uh, my condolences. There is a certain thing called uh, Google Music where you can get pretty much everything for about 10 bucks a month. So the idea of buying CDs in this day and age, I don't know, maybe it's just the kid's idea of retro. In recent tech news, it turns out that Amazon is going to be bringing deliveries right to the trunk of your car. Now, a couple of months ago, I was pretty impressed to hear the uh, rumors of some testing going on out in BC for the delivery drones, where we could actually have delivery within 30 minutes. Are you kidding me? But Amazon wants to take it one step farther in absolutely kicking the nutsack of the Canadian retail industry and dropping off packages in the trunk of people's cars. Now, obviously this is not in candy yet. This is only being tested in Germany for uh, people that own an Audi. And it seems that the idea here is that they're just going to give a, like a password or something to uh, the driver to use as a one-off, just to pop the trunk, drop it in there, and then you're good to go. Now, I think this makes a lot more sense. I think this is going to save people from having to travel after work on weekends to get stuff that they could just pick up online. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you think this is a service that you would like to see to come to Canada. Same news out of Tweaktown. It looks like uh, there is already some speculation coming for Grand Theft Auto 6. I mean, it's not like we just had this thing released on PC. I bought it for, you know, PS3, so I'm not really too psyched about paying full price again for this thing. So we're going to wait on the review for this one, I think. But again, we are going to see it in first person and in Ifinity, so look forward to that one. But uh, in speculative news, I don't even know if I can call this a rumor yet, but they're saying they want to make Grand Theft Auto... Six have a map the size of the continental United States, and I think at this point this is more of just a matter of bigger and badder, as it says in the article. But uh, it also mentions the very practical: what the hell are you going to do driving between cities? I mean, we all know how long it's going to take to get from point A to point B driving normally. And uh, if any of you remember a classic uh, Penn and Teller game, Desert Bus, I think you can kind of get an idea of where this could be headed if it wasn't very very well thought out so again what do you guys think about this do you really need a map the size of the united states or was the previous map from grand theft auto 5 large enough let me know in the comments in shittier news we have a vet who has uh decided that she deserves the vet of the year award for hunting what she claims to be a feral tomcat with a bow and arrow and Afterwards, she decided it would be a good idea to post a photograph of this online and basically display the greatest lack of self-awareness I have ever seen. So what is it she says here? My first bow kill, lol. The only good feral tomcat is one with an arrow in its head. Vet of the Year award gladly accepted. Now, I don't know if that is just ironic, sarcastic, or, or what, but... I don't know, at the end of the day, this woman uh, has been fired almost immediately, and it looks like the sheriff's department is pressing charges, but uh, the court of public opinion has obviously crucified this woman, and uh, we will have an update once we figure out what charges have resulted. As you may have known, there is a uh, big problem with migrants being essentially murdered off of the uh, coast of Libya on their way to a better life in Europe. And these guys are packing these boats with hundreds and hundreds of people that have a choice of basically staying where they are or shooting for a better life. And this is obviously a very, very contentious issue and there's not going to be any sort of an easy solution. In the most recent uh, incident, the Hindus brought us an article here indicating that they have made an arrest in this case, so charges are going to be pending in this particular case. I think up until this point this year, we've experienced about 1,500 people being killed, and again, what is going to be history's view on this particular incident and people's response to it. There are a couple of different perspectives than 
both have very good points. One of them being, are we going to just eliminate the incentive by turning all of these people away? Or are we going to promote more of a rescue response, making it easier and thus more of an incentive to try? And if you have more people trying, obviously you're going to have more people drowning. So what is the solution here? Does Europe decide to shut its doors and turn a blind eye to the issue? Do we send out the Coast Guard and rescue as many people and make it as safe as possible, thus making it much more likely people will try? I don't know. What is the solution to this problem? Obviously there's not just two. I mean, if there wasn't the incentive to come here, there would have to be a couple of outcomes. Either it would have to be so bad in Europe that they wouldn't want to go, which obviously wouldn't be an ideal scenario, or things would have to get better where they're coming from. And coming from a country that has so few inclusive political institutions and so many extractive economic ones, there's not really a clear path that Northern Africa is going to be able to take to bring itself out of this stagnation. And if these people continue to be victimized by opportunistic smugglers, the death tolls are going to continue to rise. So let me know in the comments what you think will be the solution to this. And thanks for tuning into this episode of Shredlines.